Good evening, welcome to tonight's service. It is good to be together again and to, to give praise and glory to our God who has done so much for us. We are still busy with our John Wesley series. We had a little bit of a break last week with the John Wesley, um, but we are back today and today we do sermon number 33. Um, a caution against bigotry. And so we look forward to hearing what John Wesley has to say to us about that. Um, we've got Jimmy and Francois there tonight again, and we are pray that, that they'll bless us again with their music. But let's turn to God in prayer. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we worship you this day. We worship you not as the God that we can fit into a box, that we can explain, that we can hold in our hands. But we worship you as a God who is beyond our grasp, beyond our understanding, whose hands hold us. We worship you today as a God of love, a God whose love is unchanging and never ending. Our love for you may grow weak. Our love for others may be wanting. Our, our love for our neighbour may be non-existent. But your love for us remains constant at all times. And it is because of your love for us as we are where we are, who we are, that we are unable to become more, that we are unable to find release from the hatred that lives within us, release from the indifference, release from those things that hold us back from trusting and just allow your love to wash over us allow your love to complete us allow your love to fill us allow your love to work through us O oh god who speaks who makes yourself known to us who speaks the world into existence who speaks your will over people's lives and the way and the creation, who speaks through your Son, your gift to us, who speaks through the prophets and apostles, a God who speaks, whose word is never changing, always true, always to be trusted, always to be obeyed, but we confess that we do not always listen and nor do we always obey. And so we ask, Lord, that your word will so wash over us and so fill us that it will take away this, this inability of us to hear, that we may wake up, that we may listen and do what you tell us to do, that we may become those who have a solid foundation on which to live our lives and on which to do your service. O oh God, whose spirit hovers over the waters, whose spirit goes this way and that without us fully understanding and fully knowing and just seeing the effects, your spirit that brings us life, that brings us power, that brings us the abilities that we have. 
We ask that you would forgive us when we have rejected the work of the Spirit in our lives, when we have hardened our hearts and done our thing instead of your thing, when we've said we will do it my way rather than your way, when we do it in our own strength rather than your strength, when we do what we think rather than what you tell us to do. We ask, Lord, that you will so fill us with your Spirit that it will wash away all that evil within us, that you will so fill us with your Spirit that your Spirit will flow through us into the community around us. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we worship you today. And as we worship you, change our lives. And as you change our lives, use us as you change the community in which you send us to. We ask us in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, brothers and sisters. We greet you again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, from our wife from myself. We just trust that you'll be blessed this evening, that even in your homes where you are, you know the Spirit of the Lord is, is everywhere. It's not just in one place. We thank the Lord for that. And so we can enjoy the Lord's presence anywhere, we, you know, wherever we are. And tonight as we just give, give God the glory and to welcome you here, yeah, the Holy Spirit tonight, that the Lord will touch you right where you are and know that the Lord is faithful and He is true. And we can always know that He is our God and He loves us so much. And we just want to give Him all the honour tonight. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your own sweet way here. Yeah. Tonight we ask, Lord, come, Lord, with your power, with that living water that may flow over our souls this evening, Lord. Oh 
Let your word, Lord, will be written on the tablets of our hearts, O oh God, that we may meditate there for day and night, that we may become doers of your word, that we may bear forth fruits, much fruit, and good fruit, Lord, that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. And the peace of God be with you tonight. Just open your heart and let the Lord just touch you in your innermost being. Let Him cause those rivers of living water to flow once again as we wait upon Him. The Lord, as He and the Lord's minister tonight, as He ministers the Word, that we may be attentive to the Word of God tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Reverend Kenzie.
Our scripture reading for today is from, taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. And I read from verse 38. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man who was driving out demons in your name. And we told him to stop because he doesn't belong to our group. Do not try to stop him, Jesus told them, because no one who performs a miracle in my name will be able soon afterwards to say evil things about me, us, about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I assure you that anyone who gives you a drink of water because you belong to me will certainly receive their reward. This is the word of God. Praise be to God. I read again in the, the King James Version. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. These words come after Jesus rebuked his disciples for arguing amongst one another who is the greatest. You see, they were trying to position themselves as who is more important than the other. And Jesus, as way of illustration, brought a little child. And he said that the greatest in the kingdom of God is the one who receives the little child in his name. For whoever receives the little child in his name receives him. And whoever receives him receives the Father. In response to this, John, maybe wanting to, to show how good he is, how dedicated he is to Jesus, tells the story of a man who was driving out demons in Jesus' name. And he stopped him because he didn't belong to our group. Because he followed, followed not us in the King James Version. But Jesus said to him, do not stop them. Forbid them not to follow me. As we consider this today, we want to ask first of all, is it still important to drive out demons, drive out devils? The second question to ask is, who is it that's not of our group? Who follows not us? And lastly to ask, how do we not forbid them? So first of all, the question, is it still relevant? Is it still important to drive out them? Is this not something that belongs to a past era? A time when it was believed that people were indwelled by evil spirits and that it was the task to drive them out. But we have grown out of that sort of time and we are now at a time when we do not really think the same way anymore. But one just needs to take a look at the world to realize that the devil is still busy. He is still active. In fact, you can divide the, the world almost into two groups. Those who belong to God and those who belong to the devil. There is 
for those who do not belong to God, whether they are aware of it or not, they are under the control of the devil. They are under the influence of the devil. For the devil works as the, the god of this world, as the prince of this world. He rules this world, which is not to say he rules everybody, but he rules those who are not ruled by God. It is obvious in certain contexts for at certain times the devil is quite open in his control of people. He takes pleasure in claiming murderers and rapists and all kinds of very evil people as his own. And he quite openly uses them. He also quite openly works among the superstitious. Those who are, who believe that, that there's a devil behind every bush and the devil takes pleasure in showing himself to those people. Because the more open he is about his work, the more he drives them into further idolatry, into further turning away from God. Yes, sometimes the devil works openly. But for the most part, the devil works slyly. Among those who don't believe him, he is most at work. And he works hard at keeping them thinking he doesn't exist. Because as long as they think he doesn't exist, they will not realize that they are under his control. They will not realize that they are fast asleep at the, at the, at the very edge of danger. And so the devil works subtly amongst those who do not believe in him. He also works subtly with those who don't think he has any power. <clears throat> he does not show himself as the devil, but he shows himself as, as power and prestige and, and all kinds of things that people long for. Because as long as people worship themselves, they stop worshipping God. And if the people stop worshipping God, the devil has won. And so the devil doesn't work openly amongst all. It's always easier to see the devil's work at work in others. Especially like, for instance, John Wesley spoke about the primitive people, the people who, who, um, who aren't as sophisticated as, you know, the, the, the developed world. And he points out all the evils that those people do. A lot of it, I think, is a misunderstanding rather than a realization of evil in their societies. But still, there is, it's easier to see the devil at work among the, the sort of primitive people. But let's not be mistaken. The devil is as much at work in the civilized world. It is in the civilized world. For instance, the Romans were the, one of the most advanced cultures but they were also one of the most depraved cultures. Sin was rife amongst the Romans. Sexual sins, sins of power, sins of exploitation, sins of abuse, all kinds of evil were taking place within the sophisticated world of Rome. 
and in the developed countries, in those countries that pride themselves at being in the forefront of morality, of, of showing the world the way to go, there is so much evil at, at, on display. Not, not least of which is the evil of what we have done to the indigenous people in our various places. Sometimes even in the name of God, we have exploited people and taken their land and taken their things and taken their freedom and done things to them that we should be ashamed of. Things that are obviously of the devil, not of God. But the devil tries to hide that from us. No, you are sophisticated, you are developed, you are above the rest, but we are still under the devil's control. Even within the church, even within the people who call themselves children of God, the devil is at work. You don't have to look very deep within the church to see that even in the church, sin is rife. There are things like alcoholism, there are things like adultery, there are things like theft, there are things like, you know, these things take place within the life of the church. The devil is obviously at work. And so there should be no question that one of the tasks that is set by God for those who call on his name is to drive out devils, to drive out evil. And so we come to today's text and we, we hear that there are those who drive out devils. Those who, who work for God to bring about God's kingdom and push back the kingdoms of evil. When Jesus entered a synagogue, when Jesus entered a town, when Jesus entered a place wherever he went, Often the demons came out. The demons showed themselves and Jesus chased them away. And it should not be too far from our understanding that wherever the children of God go, the demons will show themselves, the devils will show themselves and we can drive them out. God uses us. God uses his people, his followers to go he sends us out to go drive out devils. Not in our own strength. For the devil is likened in, by Jesus to a strong man. And he says you don't enter a strong man's house and think you can just overpower him. You've got to take a stronger man with you. Jesus is our stronger man. When we give in Jesus into a situation, the devil has to submit. But if we go in our own strength and power, we are not likely to succeed. And so the question, the second question comes. What about those who drive out devils who don't belong to our group, who follow not us? who follow not us? Who are these who are not of our group? Well, firstly, there are those who are just in a different place, in a different time. We can't all be together. Jesus sent us to the ends of the earth. When he sent out the 72, he sent them out two by two. And as they went, 
their separate ways and did their separate works. They couldn't say, you're not of our group, so you can't do good. We can't all work in the same place in the same time. And we need to understand that we do not always have to be together to work together. There are some who are not of our group, but who are still part of us, still doing the same work as us. They may not be of our group, but they are still of our group. They are not being, they're not following us, but they are following Jesus, so they are following us. Then there are those who are not of the same grouping. For it's a sad fact about the Christian faith that we have divided amongst ourselves. We have split into all kinds of different groups. And so we have, in any one town, we have the Methodists and we have the Baptists and we have the Catholics and we have the Anglicans and we have the Pentecostals and we have, and we have all manner of groups. And we can say about all the other groups, they are not of our group. They follow not us. And we need to understand that although they do not belong to the same group as we, there is a sense in which they belong to the same faith as us. For very often the differences between us are not actually that important. Very often the differences between us are on smallish matters of faith and practice. And we need to realize that even though they're not of our group, they are still of our faith. And then there are those who differ in their religious opinion. Sometimes we differ quite significantly from one another. There are times when we, we believe strongly in something as important, central to our faith, and others disagree. And they say, that's not important, something else is important. And we can sometimes be so against one another because of our differences of opinions. And we say you're not of our understanding. You're not of our grouping. You're not of us. You don't follow our way. But we need to realize that although we differ in understanding sometimes, we still follow the same God. Then there are those that differ in practices. We do things differently. We worship differently. Some like the old hymns and the, what called we call the hymn sandwich. Some like a long time of praise and worship. Some have written down prayers that they follow every single week and others just flow their prayers out of them. Um, some use plenty of water for baptism and some use little water for baptism. Some use bring Baptists baptism to the children, others only to adults. You know, we, we differ sometimes in some of our practices. And it's sometimes difficult to see that those who do things differently are doing it right. They're not of our group. They 
not of our type. We need to realize that it goes much deeper than just our practices. And then there are those who are not of our group, who are anti-us. We're not so much anti-them as they are anti-us. They claim that we are the ones that are at, in the wrong. And when they tell us that we are on the wrong path, we sometimes counter that they are on the wrong path and they become those who are not of our group. Not because we don't like what they teach, but because they don't like what we teach. But even amongst those who differ from us, even from the, among those who are not of our group, there can be those that drive out devils in Christ's name. And we must not speak evil of them. We must not turn against them. We must not forbid them. We must not stop them. We must be vigilant against doing that. We must be vigilant and determined to resist all temptation that takes us away from following Jesus. So how do we not forbid them? Who does not follow us? Well, First of all, we need to understand that it's important that when we see someone driving out demons or devils in Jesus' name, that is not of our group, the first temptation is not to see it. For it is very difficult to see amongst those that we do not agree with any good. And if we see good in them, we have a tendency to deny that good or to downplay that good or to, to not acknowledge that good. But we need to be honest with ourselves and with the people that we look at and ask ourselves the simple question, is God's kingdom advanced? Is Satan's kingdom pushed back? Are people turning from sin? Are people turning towards God? Are people being freed of the bondages that hold them back from serving God? Is there fruit, good fruit, that comes out of the ministry? Not to agree with the ministry, not to unlike the ministry, not do I think they are doing the right thing, but do I see that demons are being driven out, devils are being defeated, God's kingdom is being advanced. If I see this, if we see this, we must not stop them. We must not forbid them. How do we not forbid them? First of all, don't hinder them. Don't try and work against them. Don't persuade them differently. Don't use an authority over them. Don't use argument against them. Sometimes it is a case of that we are in a position of authority. We're a leader in the church. We're a minister. We're a, a steward. We're an elder. And the person that's doing the work is but an ordinary person. 
And how can they do that when I've not given my permission? Well, it's not me that has to give permission. We need to realize that it is not us that people are serving. It is Christ that they are serving. God chooses whom God wishes to work with. And if God chooses to use that person, it's not in my place to stand against God using that person. But I don't know if God sent them. Well, God doesn't need my permission. God doesn't need to pass it by me. He doesn't have to come and ask me if I, he can use somebody else. I need to trust God. If I see God using a person, and the person is being used by God in a real and effective way, I must not forbid it. But if they're not ordained, Paul speaks about leaders and elders in the church that need to be tested and need to be qualified for the position and need to have a certain standard. And yes, within the church there seems to be a need for a certain structure. But let's get away from the concept that it's only in the church that demons need to be driven out. We need to realize that it is ordinary Christians that need to go out into the world and do the work of God in the world. They do not have to be ordained by for it. They do not have to be appointed to it by me or by a bishop or by whoever. They are and only, only need to be appointed by Christ. Bishops may forbid, but I will not. The bishops may have the authority to do things, but I do not. For if I forbid, I may find myself working against God. There is a direct way of forbidding, where we directly, actively work against a person, where we deny everything they do and say, where we despise them when we make little of them. In direct ways, we stand against people. We should not stand against people like that. But we also can stand against people indirectly by subtly discouraging them, speaking behind their back, influencing people not to listen to them. And we should not be subtle in our forbidding either. We are not to forbid them at all. We're not to do anything that's in a kind, unkind toward them. We're not to act in any way against them. In fact, we should work for them. We should encourage them. We should, where we can, help them. We should work towards the growth of God's kingdom. We should work towards encouraging others to work towards God's kingdom. We should do all we can to equip them for that and encourage them in that. And we should give God the glory wherever it takes place. So we should not forbid those who are not of our group from doing the work of God. If we do in any way whatsoever, then we are bigots. And a bigot is a term that is as frequently misunderstood as when we looked at last time enthusiasm. A bigot is any person 
who refuses recognition to another simply because they are different. God calls us all uniquely and equips us all uniquely. The fact that we are different is God's way of reaching into a lost world. It is not our place to say because they're different, they therefore are. Because they're different, I need to work against them. A bigot is those who think difference means exclusion. Difference means rejection. And that is what we must guard against at all costs. Is there a sense in which I'm a bigot by saying that? Am I forbidding people from forbidding others? I'm just trying to say that as for me, I will seek to serve God with all my mind, with all my heart, with all my strength. I will seek to advance the kingdom of God wherever I can. And I will assist others wherever they can, I can. I will not judge when and how and who they can do it for. I will let God decide that, not me. It is not my place to tell God whom to use. Search me, Lord. Rule out any kind of bigotry that still remains in my heart. Take out of me this tendency that is real within me of thinking others are wrong because they are different. If I see John Wesley use different words, but let me use words that we have today. If I see a Catholic or Anglican, or Baptist, or Pentecostal. Or <clears throat> I must not see an enemy of Christ. I must see a brother and sister in Christ. If I see a Jew, or Muslim, or an atheist, I'm not to work against them especially if the work they are doing advances God's kingdom. Acknowledge the finger of God. Acknowledge the work that God is doing amongst people. Rejoice in what God is doing. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. And through that, encourage people, speak well of people, help people in every possible way so that God's kingdom is grown and the kingdoms of evil are pushed back. Let's not make bigots make us into bigots. Do not return evil with evil. If people reject you because they do not believe we are doing what we should be doing. It does not mean we should reject them and not believe what they are doing. Let us keep ourselves focused on serving our God and focused on giving God the glory wherever we see the work of God taking place. Let us guard against bigotry of every kind, even if they are not of our own. Amen. Thank you. I want to close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for your love that reaches us at that place where we most need to be reached. At that point in our lives where we are most in danger 
of losing out on fullness of life. Thanks for changing us from enemies of you into friends of you. And in our ministry in the world, may we understand that whoever is not against us is for us. And let us not use your love for us as an excuse not to love others. Let us love as you have first loved us. Let us reach out as you reached out to us. Let us bridge the gaps as you bridge the gap between you and us. Let us go and make this world know that you want them to find life in you, through you, with you. To set them free from the evil that has possession of their lives. Whatever form that evil may take, may we be instruments in your hands and may we encourage all who are instruments in your hands as we are in the forefront of this battle between good and evil. And as we grow your kingdom, we ask only that you would guide us and that you would know that we give you the glory for every victory along the way, whether it's our victory or yours or somebody else's. We pray this all in and through the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Thank you everybody for joining us again tonight. Um, just to encourage you if you have been watching till now, well done, thank you. Um, just please just click the like button or make a comment just so that we know that you have joined us. It does encourage me um, to know that, that people watch and fo uh, follow this, this series. May God bless you. Um, may you know the grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout this week. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.